Hello and welcome to today's webinar, where today, of course, it is all about the deals clinic. It's all about looking at your deals, looking at um, opportunities you may have found or maybe looking to um, try to, um, to move forward with and your chance then to ask us uh, what we think about those. So uh, today I'm delighted to, um, to let you know that I have my, my colleague, uh, Andrew Green here. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Good to see you, Paul. You too. Absolutely. Long time no see. Um, and so Andrew um, was in a previous life, um, 10 years land director at Taylor Wimpy. So um, or land and planning director at Taylor Wimpy. So kind of knows a little thing or two about how to find a piece of land um, with some opportunity to find some residential opportunity, residential, uh, opportunity on it. So, so today um, we can jump straight into it. So it's going to be a sort of a, a quick jump straight into um, into the deals that you're, you're looking at. So what I would like to do is to um, ask the audience um, if you'd like to uh, ask a question or have a particular site you'd like us to look at, then if you could um, open up your little control panel um, on Zoom and just raise your hand, there's a little button to raise hand. If you could do that for us, we'll, we'll bring you up, we'll ask you to unmute yourself, we'll, we'll then bring up your site or your, your opportunity on the screen and we'll start to um, start to look at those. So Darren's raised his hand, let's see if we can get um, Darren here, let's see if we can, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, Darren, if that's okay. Hey Darren, how are you doing? Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> Fabulous, how can we help? What, um, what would you like us to look at? Uh, yeah, I did uh, send you the uh, address yesterday. It's, um, I'll give you the postcode. It's NR13. Yep. Uh, 4NE. 4NE, November Echo, yep. That's it, yeah. It's uh, 34 yep. Norwich Road. Number 34 Norwich Road. So one of the tricks I often use with this when sort of trying to find a, a particular location is just switch that across to the um, to the master map. It's often kind of a quick way of doing that. So um, number 34 Norwich Road. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit of a tricky one. It's that, that one. It? Off Goat Lane. Yeah. Yeah, down there. Cool. So um, if I just click on that one there, so that's your opportunity there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, interesting. Interesting. So basically, it's um, there's two semis next to each other, 32 and 34. Yeah. Um, what I'm seeing is if it's possible to stick a four bed detached to the left of number 34. Yeah. So in effect, so down off, sort of across there, basically. <clears throat> now, the, the biggest negative I think I can see is actually the access roads um, off Goat Lane. So. Mm. The only access to the property is actually where your little yellow man is. Yeah, down here. To, to the rear. You haven't actually got a proper front access. One for you, Andrew. What's mm. your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the access is a bit tricky. I mean, I suppose how many are accessing off there? It looks like there's those, it's just those two properties that are right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Goat Lane. Um, I mean, it is a very narrow little track, so I imagine they're probably going to wheel their bins all the way out to the front there. Um, now, I think ultimately, you, I mean, you probably could get another one off there. It, it, you know, I think, and and look to you know, you might have to just have the same sort of principles. I think the only issue might be actually more sort of fire. Um, you know, I think I think the, the local authority might look beyond, you know, the bin lorry saying, well, look, the bin lorry will only go here, you know, if, if the residents are happy to, to take their bins to here, then that's fine. The, the then the secondary sort of accessy type issue you tend to find is then the, the fire truck being able to get to, I can't remember if it's 30 metres or 45 metres or whatever it is now, you know, it's got to be able to get within that of the property. Um, now, obviously, existing properties, they're slightly sort of exempt, you know, obviously, they, you know, they put these um, regulations in place, and then obviously, any new properties have to meet those, and, and obviously, old ones don't. But it might be with a, you know, with a conversation with a planner, to, you know, maybe to see if there's a way around that, to sort of say, well, look, you know, you've got these existing properties, they're X metres away from um from the main highway because a, a fire truck is just not going to get down that track um you know it is 
I mean, I suppose technically it could probably squeeze down, but you know, there's no effort to turn around and everything else. It's just not really going to work. I think, I think you might might struggle on those grounds. I think would be my um, my opinion. But yeah, thinking as well. Um, if it's a nightmare seat, so it's within the settlement boundary, and all of the other sustainability stuff is pretty good. It's I'm liking it. I think it'd be worth a, certainly worth a pre app or certainly worth a, a crack up to think of that, isn't it? It's kind of, it looks um, pretty pretty reasonable to me in terms of the, um, the amenities of that. So I thought that's. Yeah, it's it's 0.6 of the main railway station, which goes to Yarmouth and Norwich. Um, it's it's in within, uh, sorry, the uh, settlement boundary for the local plan. And it's, and all that kind of things, there's no TPOs and uh, flood zones and all that kind of stuff. Um, it kind of thing as well, you'd be keeping the existing building line off the two cottages. Um, mm. I think you've got a choice of the there or there, possibly. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, you've got off that sort of line there and put something there or put something up there, I would think. You... It was it was just more maybe the parking but I kind of thought if you get the property near the front of the building arm, mm. two spaces for the new well into the left. Um mm. parking for the uh, for the but, um it's interestingly they do a free pre ad which I've, I've not come across on in London. So oh, yeah. You should to get a free pre-app um, with a local authority, but yeah. Really, and then and then off at Broads, they're uh, they're either getting loads of income from somewhere or uh, or they're not very busy, so uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> they're, they're quite happy to. Uh, I think. I mean, I don't know the the thing that comes to my mind. I think if you if you're struggling with access to be able to use that access, and I agree, you know, a pre-app would 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 solve that if you know that that point straight away or you know speaking to a planning consultant um who whether they feel they could argue that with a council um that i mean the bungalow to just to the to the west um wouldn't be a bad shout you know potentially to sort of look to acquire that unregistered bungalow and obviously this property and then sort of convert the two into almost sort of three units or something at the back or something like that and you've got a much better access um coming out through side there yeah that bungalow is it's you know it's a good decent width there's a little turning head at the end so you know it just it would make a lot more sense um from that side, but I mean, to be honest, yeah, you've got to think my you know, my background is always building, you know, 100 houses plus. So we're always looking for nice, big, easy accesses. I think if you're trying to argue one one plot where there's already two plots off it. Yeah, I, that was you, fine to me. You would, I was going to suggest you did is, is use, the, um, use the planning export here. So this, what I've done here is, for those you don't know, I've, I've run a planning export for residential opportunities across Broadlands, Council and Effects. Mm. That's what this has brought back. And then kind of across this list here, here's a list of all the all those planning applications. So there's four units there, three here. And then kind of we sort of shoot across to the right hand side. What it then should show I me, mean, oh, it's blank. Gosh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Usually that's um full of details of the agents that are that are covering that that, that particular location. So yeah. let's go the old school way then. We'll sort of um oh, it's one of these old websites, isn't it? Oh, it's annoying, isn't it? Let's just we'll have to go old school and this would be pretty painful. This would be pretty painful. There was, actually, there, there was actually a new development just over the road on the Rich Road, which I think was seven space uh, detached properties. Uh, yeah, sure. There was, I saw a couple of those, actually. So I, I used the planning overlay for that. So I saw um, the red yeah, spot actually. there, which is the one. Yeah, so there's your seven dwellings there, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Go and have a look at that one. Um, in fact, that's probably your best answer. Just go and have a chat to them. But... I thought kind of this might be interesting down here because you've got kind of in a list of um I did want to do view documents. You I just want to find a decent architect for you basically. So um yeah. sort of and unfortunately it's a pretty painful, um pretty painful website. And gosh, the redirection as well, because it's glorious, isn't it? Glorious, glorious. Oh, thank you, log in. I think I've gone as far as I can be bothered actually with that. I'm sorry, Darren. What I was going to do is go right. through um, <laughs> through the journey of looking at sort of relevant planning applications nearby 
and then for those seeing who the architects were for those so we, I, you know mm -hmm. that's quite an interesting one in terms of the one over the road there and mm -hmm. i guess that's going to take you through to the, the same page isn't it yeah so there's well there's your planning application for that one um just, just straight that's fine. I, can, I can i can look at those things just just quickly before we go guys um i just ask you just on what your thoughts are on the general market because it, it it's kind of a bit crazy at the moment there's so many people looking for property this this property there was 35 viewers for and it's sort of like seven to ten offers and this is quite usual of, of what i've been experiencing over the last six to 12 months you guys kind of think this is all to do with um the stamp duty holiday and the continual low interest rates and that kind of thing and do you think it's going to peter off or do you think this is going to be around for quite a sort of a long time when i say around i mean it's higher and so yes what we've um what we've been finding um, i just did a survey last week on my linkedin profile and we had um about four thousand people respond so i think the, the, the short answer that I've got is that it sounds like it's on the market, which is kind of the, the challenge. And I think that's where you get this kind of this kind of craziness, this kind of especially kind of big gardens, back gardens, corner plots, side gardens, this sort of stuff. They're, it's quite attractive. We're all just kind of just coming out of lockdown and sitting there looking back over the last 18 months and thinking, my life would have been so much better if I'd got this bigger garden than the one I've got. You know, whatever size your garden is, it always wants to be bigger because I've got other plans I want to do in that in that particular garden, in effect. So I think looking on market for that sort of stuff is where the the challenge comes. I said this this, this survey in um, in my LinkedIn profile. I actually did the webinar with my brother last week, and there were kind of similar similar kind of responses, which basically saying that about nine percent, nine to ten percent of people are looking on market and being successful on market. The balance of the other half are either working through agents off market, or they're working and they're doing their own letter campaigning to go and find sites. And the reason that that works so well is that, of course, if you're, if, you know, if you put it on the market, you end up in that space of, well, kind of what is that plot of land to the side worth and how much are we going to pay you for that? How much are you going to put in as an unconditional offer as part of that? Because I'm overpaying for what I've already got because actually if I don't get planning on it, then I haven't got what I thought. I haven't just got a big garden, a house with a big garden rather than a house and a plot, in effect. And you're sort of pushed into that, into that world of where that becomes difficult. And I think so, it's, it's, are you saying then that you think in the current market through the offline stuff? Um, I mean, I've got two of your um, elite plus things. Um, you think there's still a lot of people being successful at the moment through the elite plus? Um, different yes. Um, yeah. I think on market yeah. on market brings its own challenges around. You know, what, why does someone buy something on market? You, you buy something on the market because either you're prepared to take more risk than somebody else's bids in the open market with you. So, so you're taking more risk than the rest of the marketplace is prepared to take, in effect. That's kind of the, the theory of it. Or you're taking a lower profit margin for that same level of risk everyone else is prepared to take. Mm -hmm. And so, so by definition, you're kind of not quite getting what, what you want. To win it, you have to be sort of, sort of tweaking those, those numbers kind of, against where the marketplace is in effect everybody else at this level and you have to go to this level to be able to buy it in effect yeah. so yeah. so the beauty of your off-market stuff is that whilst it may take a little bit longer what you end up with is is paying a sensible price for a piece of land possibly then paying a little bit more than that to kind of give the the owner comfort that if they go to the open market they won't achieve that same number um, because you're adding value to it through the planning game that you're creating off the back of it, sharing a little bit of that with them, and then everything's optional or a subject to kind of deal something like that to make all that make all that stack up. So my feeling is that you know the on market when it comes to firstly just generally buying stuff on market, it's expensive at the moment. But then when there's an angle to it as well, like something like that, then it's very expensive because then you get into the realms of well, if I buy that house and and you're sort of competing with people that don't really know what the value of land is and therefore kind of what are they putting on the plot value for that and how much development profit they're taking out the back of their build themselves and, and all that kind of stuff that just means that you're sort of 
fishing in the wrong pond, if I dare, if I dare say. So I would, I would use Relief Plus strategies instead and, and sort of hammer those rather than, um, rather than look at the stuff on market, if, if it was me, personally. So what are your thoughts are, Andy? <laughs> Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. You know, we always used to say it's, it's the winner's curse, you know, with our market stuff. You know, the moment you've bought it, it's like, all oh, right, okay, so what did we, what did we miss over, over someone else? You know, because we, you know, we would always buy with a margin and we always had to make sure we hit a margin. Um, so then you, you knew there was, you know, there's, you know, and it's just managing, you know, what those, um, you know, what that missed cost might have been, you know, when you buy that site. Um, yeah, you know, I agree. I think, you know, competition for sites is up and down. You know, I've heard a lot of stuff around, you know, competition for sites is, is really high. Um, I think there's a lot of people feeling, you know, that if there is this sort of lull, um, you know, as a result of COVID and there's this sort of pent up demand and that's what's driving house prices and, and everything else, then, you know, builders are, you know, are wanting to make sure that they've got plots to be able to then be selling to this marketplace that is just desperate for housing, um, which is driving up that competition. But, you know, on the, on the flip side, like we said about, you know, Elite Plus, I have loads of conversations with people, you know, with Elite Plus who have maybe used one strategy and said, look, fantastic, I found a couple of plots, I'm working through those now, what I'd love to do is switch to a different strategy and, and try and find, you know, more opportunities in my area before then I start having to look at sort of further afield. So anecdotally, you know, and I appreciate we don't speak to, you know, or get a sort of success report from every single one of the um, the users, but anecdotally from people we're speaking to, they are finding success and they're wanting, you know, and they're wanting more and they're wanting to progress. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, with, with off-market, you know, and for me, the most obvious one is this this pub or something. It's got such a huge... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and actually... You could even just retain the pub, but just sort of, you know, put a line of four houses at the back or something with a nice access and, and the pub can still have a little beer garden or something. Um, and, and I think, you know, that, you know, if you're approaching that pub one-on-one -on -one and it's owned by, you know, whoever it is, Ross Acre, um, yeah. Holmesby, yes, you know, they may say, well, look, we know it's, you know, what it's worth is housing, but then at least you're in that one-on-one -on -one conversation about trying to pay a good price for housing rather than, being upped by everyone else who's involved um, so that you just, you just, you know, the balance in power and that negotiation is, is a bit more 50, 50. Whereas the moment you're all there competing with 10 other people, the balance of power is always with that seller. And they're just like, thank you very much. Just keep bidding each other up until, uh, until everyone else stops. And that's, you know, you're not going to be making huge amounts of money. Yes. If you need to get a site, you need to get, you know, you've got, employees and you want to be keeping people going then fair enough but you know if you're there looking thinking right you know this is my one or two sites that i'm going to do this year then maybe it's then time to, to find another one and you know and the beauty with something like elite plus is you can find you know we can literally give you access to tens of thousands it's just a case of getting all those letters out and then you'll get you know tens of responses you know i mean you know i spoke to someone who's who off the back of 300 letters um so they had, had 10 genuine good bits of interest um, off the back of it. And I think they'll probably end up doing, you know, two or three of those deals, one of which they were pretty much done on the, on the heads of terms. Um, you know, so it's, you know, you think, you know, if you're, if you're there and, you, and you're talking to 10 different people about trying to find a deal and you're thinking, well, mm, they want a bit much for that one. Well, all oh, this one looks about right. You feel a lot more confident in your own negotiation because you know, you think, well, I've got that next one, you know, lined up and, you know, or if this one doesn't work, I'll be a bit cheeky and see if I can, you know, get a great price on this one. If not, I've always got these other two to fall back on. And and that just gives you so much more confidence going into that appraisal and going into that negotiation than it would do if you're thinking, this is the one and only site I've found that's on the market. There's 10 people sniffing around it. You know, you're thinking... And you need to be a, a book about it, can't you? You can kind of agree a valuation and you know, get three agents' valuations for it or whatever, and then agree a 20% of the of the overage that's created at the back of the planning game, you create off the back of that and we'll put it on the market. We'll find out what the best offer is. We'll agree the split. You'll get 20% of that. I get the rest or 30% or whatever it is. Um, and you'll get that in 12 months time. So if you get the right people that want to do that deal, which kind of, why wouldn't you, unless you need the money, of course, um, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward stuff really. And it's kind of one of the, sort of the key messages that I've sort of heard through as we've sort of been doing these, these, um, these deal clinics is a lot of the, a lot of the challenges that we see is because people are looking on market and and that on market bit is as you say you know it's kind of race to the bottom in many ways it's kind of who's prepared to trim the 
the yield, the, the kind of who's prepared to put the highest sales value on the site and who's prepared to put the lowest build costs in and who's prepared to take the lowest profit because they're the ones that ultimately win. Um, and then do they actually make any money out of the back of that? There's certainly an example of that in, in Leamington that we did where we really struggled and we won a, a, you know, a, a, a competitive um, bid. We paid half the price the previous owner bought it for us, so it was kind of it did feel like a good, like, good deal at the time, but it wasn't a, a deal we made very much out of, and, and it's because it's just straight on market, it's competitive, and we just felt we knew enough to, to do it, but it's just a, um, it's difficult, I think. Mm. That makes sense, Aaron, does that, does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Uh, sorry, I'm out of your time, that's, that's really useful, thank you very yeah, much. Sure. So I'd, I'd be using the Elite Plus strategies. Which ones have you got, Darren? Which Elite Plus strategies um, have you got? Yeah, I've got uh, the residential plot, which is kind of yeah. more and butter. And yeah. I've got the airspace above commercial, which is a uh, kind of yeah. new uh, sort of venture to me. Uh, yeah. sure. I think the, the risk versus reward for that strategy does seem pretty good. So is, is that sort of what you think as well? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So that's the class yeah. ZA strategy, and that's a really, really interesting one. So it's, it's quite big stuff you can, you can get away with. You can knock it all down and put, put the thing, you know, rebuild off the back of that with two flats on, two stories of flats on top. So it's, um, it's some pretty good stuff you can get off the back of that, to be honest. And sort of, it's pretty selective around making sure it's got that residential feel to it as well. So, um, so interesting, yeah, cool. Yeah. Good luck with it. I'd go and hammer that on you and, um, and perhaps put right moving Zoopla down personally, but that's my take. I would say that, I don't know. So. Fabulous. Thank you, Darren. Um, Emily's got her hand up as well. So we'll just um, see if we can ask Emily to unmute herself. Um, let's see if we can. Hello. Hi, Emily. How are you doing? Hi. How are you doing? Good. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, that was really interesting. Um, it's still going all over my head at the moment with using numbers <laughs> and all this extra information. It's so much data. Um, I do have a um, site in mind. It's a commercial. Yep. Um, should we do that one? Or? Yeah, please, yeah. Um, it's BA3, I guess, as Darren gave his postcode, I'll do the same. Yep. And sort of 2DL around there. 2DL, yeah. If you go in there, I can sort of direct you. Sure. Um, if you go on the high street, which is right there, yep. If you scroll further in or zoom in, Feels weird directing, but um, there we go. Um, uh, you click on the one that's that says ATM on the right. ATM on the right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Um, so this whole site is currently um, for sale. Yep. Yep. That one. It used to be two charity shop. Well, one charity shop, and at the moment, um, <clears throat> so the whole high street is slowly being sort of switched over one one at a time as you can see the shop next to it has just been sold as well that one yeah, yeah. exactly that used to be a coffee shop and now it's going to be turned into a takeaway i believe um yeah. this one is a charity shop the pe the one with people sign on it yeah. and now the whole block is for sale and it's got planning i think it's got planning permission i can't remember now um but i think the space is 400 square meters which is quite yeah quite a lot yeah. bang on yeah Yep. Um, and it's split into two floors. It looks short, but inside is actually really, really tall, if that makes sense, the height. Yep. Um, definitely enough space for two floors, which in my head, this is what I was thinking. If we can get the two shops to be split into two shops. So currently it's one big shop. Mm -hmm. If I change into two shops, then I can under the class G above yeah. it, two flats yep. on top each. It's but, wide and long enough to sort of rejig and, and fit if the architect can make it happen to have two flats on top. Um, but I think we need planning to change the, the look of the front and also yeah. access from the back, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, yeah this is my idea. So you yeah, can now cool. dissect it. <laughs> well, let's, um, if I could start at the start, because the, the first place, you know, is kind of what a residential phase in the area is kind of the first thing to worry about. So, um, so the average sales price is £270 a foot. So the reason I'm kind of bothered about that start is I want to make sure that you're converting all the building. Is the retail space at the front worth more than the, than the kind of the, the land value, if you like, of the, the residual value of the, of the front piece? So kind of which bits are we going to convert and what are we going to do with the effect? So first thing is that it's saying it's £270 a foot for okay. average, average residential properties in effect. Rule of thumb is that 
you add 20% of that, that's probably going to give you a, a sensible GDV, broadly speaking. So if we add 50 quid, 60 quid to that, something like that, um, we're at sort of 330 a foot, 325, something like that. And we can dive into a lot more detail with the filters. We can go into the, the comparables and say, just show you price. We can go into that, all that detail, but kind of cutting to the chase, usually you get to about that sort of number. So for today, if we just assume we've got, say, 325, 325 pound a foot sales values, that's going to give me something to kind of to broadly work out whereabouts we're going to start thinking about converting this building in effect. So, so first thing, 325. What I would then usually do is kind of knock a quarter off for, um, for profit and costs, which um, sounds to me to be about 75 quid, something like that, isn't it? Broadly speaking, maybe, maybe 60 pounds, something like that, 65. Um, uh, in fact, I'll get my calculator out so I kind of know what I'm doing. Give me two seconds rather than try and do it live on a, on a webinar. So 325 times 0.75 is what I'd usually do. So it's kind of 250 left. If we had a conversion cost of say 100 quid, we've got kind of 150 left over, which is kind of what we're going to buy, buy a sort of part of the building for. In fact, that's my kind of budget to buy, to buy space and then convert it and then sell it at, at a 25% return on cost, plus a few finance costs and this sort of stuff. Um, it's about 150 a foot is what I've got to, got to play with in effect. So you're so that's trying to buy it at 150 per square foot? Yeah, or less. Or less right. so, so the reason why I want to know that is that I want to then kind of consider that in terms of what this lot here is telling me. So, so this stuff here is saying that on the ground floor, there's some zone A space at £10.70 a foot. So at £10.70, that probably is about 150 a foot. That sort of ballpark, I suspect. It's not, it's... It may be 200 pounds a foot. It's that sort of, you know, 150, 200 pounds, something like that, I suspect, for that, for that zone A space. So everything apart from the zone A space would convert comfortably into, into residential kind of financially. I've got to go and do a proper appraisal on this, but in my head, <laughs> okay. I feel pretty confident that zone A is probably worth as much as, um, kind of worth as much an existing use as it is worth as kind of a, a, an empty building to convert to residential effect. It's broadly speaking in that kind of ballpark. We may okay. decide that it's better off having a complete conversion rather than just sort of bits of it. But I kind of want to start there because if that, if that number said it was 40 quid a foot, because it's actually quite prime, it's on the high street, it's kind of obviously a secondary town and therefore it's not, it's not kind of prime, prime. But if it was, then I'd be saying, well, we can't convert zone A and zone B because it's not going to stack up if that's the case. But a £10 a foot, we probably could. It's kind of up to us in terms of what we want to go and do with all of that. So I think then you've got some choices at that point. So you've got, um, as you say, you've got residential to the side. So I think it does naturally look at a, at, a, at a conversion. My feeling is that it should stack up to convert. So, you know, overall it's £2.88. So, mm -hmm. you know, £2.88 means the rent probably is top end five quid. If you're paying 8% for it, then, um, then you're... Uh, you know, you're paying sixty pounds a foot for something like that. So you, you're well within your one fifty budget in effect. So it feels like that's numbers good. wise, it should stack up. Um, the bit then that's kind of probably interesting is firstly, it's not listed. Is not listed. Not in a flood zone. Not in green, but obviously a rain so, so I think that works quite nicely actually. And then you've got, I suppose, choices then around. Um, this thing is actually a flat on the site. Actually, there's some self-contained flats. Sort of yeah. So this is um, a bit random, but that, that number itself shouldn't be 40A Stanley Court. It should be number 55A, but I don't know why it shows up as that. It's the right um, marker, but just wrong address. So if you scroll further in, right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is confusing. Mm -hmm. Very strange. Yeah, it's 55A, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's weird. It's but I, I suppose it's Stanley Courts is the residence around it. Um, so they are called Stanley Courts. Oh, it might around. be, yeah, it might be kind of yeah. like yeah. back or something like that. Maybe the flats that have got that address actually, maybe kind of 40A off the back there. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe why, yeah. So I think from my point of view, the, the thing stacks up, I think, to convert. Um, I think you could... I'm you super could, impressed you just looked at that and just work out the numbers, right? That, it stacks up <laughs> as <laughs> conversion. Well, there's, um, you just see whether the, whether the, um, Class MA strategy likes it or not. Um, yes, yeah, so the Class MA strategy likes it as well. So this is kind of, this is a more detailed version of what I was talking about, in fact. So- Oh, this is the new strategy that's part of a new package. Yeah, this is part of the Elite Plus system, in effect. So, so this is kind of doing the calculation I'm doing in my head and the, and the kind of the, 
the checking that I was doing myself to say, does it work or not? So in effect, what, what the class MA strategy has done is said, well, there's your 55A the high street. So that's actually picked out the, the property rather than the spec 40A is actually the, the rear part of the system. Otherwise, um, respect to one of those two flats that was brought back on up there, actually. So it's brought back the fact that it's, again, 400 square meters, 4,392 square feet, but it's a shop. And then what it's saying is that that sort of calculation that I made in my head, that sort of 325 a foot, it's saying, yeah. well, it's 320. It's applying a hundred pound a foot conversion cost and saying that it thinks the rent should be more like four quid rather than the five quid budget I put in my head mm. and saying 7% rather than 8%. But ultimately, it gives me that same kind of calculation to say that it kind of stacks up. This thing that if you paid two fifty for it, there's three quarters million pounds of profit in it with that mm. with that conversion. So I think um, I think it stacks to convert. It depends what you pay for it, obviously. But there's quite a lot of quite a lot of fat in that in terms of you know if you paid twice that price for it, you're still going to have half a million quid worth of worth of value off it. Mm. In terms of implementing it, you've got class MA that I think works. That would then convert the whole building into residential. Um, the bit that you need to think about is kind of natural light, um, yep. which makes me wonder whether your first plan um, might be more interesting in terms of class G would give you two flats above, above the shop. You've already got two flats on there anyway. Um, whether that's more interesting or whether the class, you need to, go, you need to kind of prove with the with the with the PD rights that you can convert it and get natural light in. So I think you've got you've probably got a um, a class MA application that perhaps is is not particularly glamorous to start with, which gets to change if you start. <laughs> so I you do of, non glamorous. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, so I'd almost kind of do a class, you know, sort of four flats on the ground floor or something, you know, kind of one facing out here with loads of windows and some facing here maybe or possibly even a light well or something mm. or kind of some roof lights something to kind of just get to establish the principle of the change of use into residential um yep. and then i think what i'd then be doing is doing a more comprehensive scheme on it i think you'd you'd probably do quite well um probably knocking it down and rebuilding i suspect because i sort mm. of looking at this here you know that's mm. sort of nearly four stories actually it's not quite but it's nearly four stories um mm -hmm. so could you get something you know up here instead and do something more comprehensive with it and then sort of look at how you um, the configure that at the back i'm not quite sure that the existing envelope is quite necessary but you you've got a the fallback if i just convert it under class ma thanks very much just need to prove natural light so i'm going to put some windows in here and some windows here um mm -hmm. that may be a, a simple a simple thing as well so i think my my conclusion would be is get some plans drawn to see what you think, see what those plans look like. Um, the people I would use for that, I mean, there's kind of, there's various things you can do with, with um, you know, who are the right people to go for. So Bath and North East Somerset are the, um, are the council that covers the area. Yep. Um, you could do a you know, residential opportunity, who are the residential developers that are looking across, across this area. Um, one of the things that's... 200 uh, of them my god sorry Emily oh sorry I just looked at your search and it says 250 of plan 250 architects or planners planning applications yeah so it's going to look the last 250 applications across um across Bath and Somerset or Bath and East Somerset whatever it's it's a lot. Mm. Um, yeah. bring the last 250 back and then it's going to link them to the owner's details and then to the um to the uh the the applicants that, that submitted them that was kind of like the agents rather so this is kind of what I was showing a moment ago, kind of, you know, this 15 unit scheme there that's gone in, um, there's the, the title that it sat on, um, and then kind of who was the applicant when it was Shepparton Homes, and they used GCP architects as their, as their um, planning, as their, as their kind of agent, their planner, their, their architect in effect. So you can start to get a list of kind of interesting people there to go and help. Mm -hmm. um, what I was also thinking we might just do is just sort of play another game, which I'm quite a fan of, which is um, filtering this down by the date those applications, the date that the sites that had these residential planning applications on, the date they were last sold. So in effect, what this is showing me is showing me a list of properties that have been bought recently and then had a residential planning application submitted on them. So in essence, what you'll find is that 
these are your local investor developers that kind of understand that that sort of Bath and um, East Somerset council in effect kind of understand that sort of that that's um, they're, they're, they're the local developers which is, is a short answer so we've then got a list of what's the radius sorry um so this is all the way in Bristol now the first one yes this is across the whole council so he's looking at the whole council who are the people then that are submitting applications in that council and therefore know the the, the officer know the policy officer know the you know the conservation officer or whatever kind of whoever those people are they need to kind of know in the council these are the ones that are kind of acting for the local developers on schemes so the local developers in effect then rate them is, is the point but they've then got the year of the council the right for the council then go and put the schemes forward and move those forward in effect mm. what i wanted to show you then was well actually the list of people i'd be speaking to then are all these sort of down here in effect i've listed a whole load of them and i'd sort of be looking at the um there's the, the agent's left. name that we want really exactly that so that's on the right hand side there in effect and you may even go sort of a stage further and so you know change of use of a public house into eight self-contained apartments that would seem quite similar to the kind of yeah thing. sounds like it um, you know change of use of shop into a dwelling house kind of maybe um <laughs> so you sort of got you know going to a bungalow and put another house on probably not necessarily the club and you want necessarily it might be okay but um sort of you can kind of pick out of this the most relevant ones in fact and then go off and see who the architect was for that and then sort of you know go off and have a chat with them about you know whether Thorpe and Hunter were the right people for you and this sort of stuff so so that would then give you a set of architects that kind of understand a that local council b the kind of scheme you're putting forward you're pretty comfortable planning wise you know you can get your, your pd rights to work um with you've got to be careful with the class ma um planning applications, or sorry, PD rights, because you have to kind of prove natural light. So that's the only bit that I'm sort of not so sure about, is how you get that that natural light into that building. Um, yeah, um, they've got top windows at the moment, but only in the back. Um, yeah, sure. So what I was there, I don't think, but, you know. Yeah, so roof building. lights, mostly, I think, is the, is the solution here. My concern is you've got buildings to the rear of it, <laughs> which might be... Yeah, but, um, you know, Plots one and two concern me a little bit because they're very close and they're quite high as well. Where's plots one and two? Uh, in Stanley Court. So oh, right, okay. So, um, so yeah. that place where it says, oh, right, that one, yeah. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. That's actually an elevation, so it's, it's actually a, a road higher, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, and the surgery area, that actually doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, you can see, look, just at the top, past the people uh, building. Uh, yeah. You bet they're yeah, right there, yeah. That's plot one and two, um, which has already been built in the past. So, so I think you have to have the yeah, air like roof lights, roof lights in. It's, it's kind of it's, it's natural light on this ground floor that's kind of bothering you. It's kind of how do you get that, that sort of natural light into the ground floor? Um, which is why I think you end up at a real comprehensive scheme or perhaps a bit more at the front here, um, mm. and then with some natural light at the back. You probably want to run a couple of scenarios and then sort of. You kind of need to prove for the scheme you're putting forward how you get that that light in in effect because actually that bit there that's included that is one. yeah it's, it's included it's rather weird but yeah, that, that is part there. of ours on a side <laughs> but weird isn't it? it doesn't look like it, it looks like that sort of mm. part of it sits sort of the is a bit strange isn't it? in terms of the title sits relative to um mm. We've got a title issue there actually. That's is that a whole title? Maybe if you look at the boundary lines, the red thick lines in your yeah, sure. The so bottom, the, goes yeah. all the way around. Yeah. So the this is the, the the line of the title, but my guess is that the actual property sits along, sort of goes straight along that line, which is why I think you might have a title title issue as part of it. Kind of who owns that piece of land there? Because the Irish think that these people own it. But I suspect it's being used by parts by um by uh 55A. Mm. The um little outbuilding right there that you can see that's kind of gr grey greenish. It's only what you see there. It doesn't go all the way to the back. Um. So I'm tempted to say it probably isn't used by anyone. It's just oh, empty. That doesn't yeah, align the title then at all. And if it's that's just the point, yeah, my worry is that the title is a sort of a title issue in terms of 
of how the so I think that just needs regularizing as part of the purchase process, kind of what's happening there in effect. That's all issue. Is that a legal well that would be a legal um requisition, isn't it? Yeah. You, you have solicitors would solve that. I think that'd be well, and equally question kind of over that bit as well, because that's that bit sat in the title behind it as well. So I think the title the title for me looks like it's a bit of a mess. It can be fixed, it's not kind of a major issue, but it looks like the sort of the title is just to think about as well. Um but I think in many ways it's, it's kind of quite interesting in terms of um in terms of the opportunities with it. It's um uh Changes from restaurant to a shop to a restaurant. So this is next door, isn't it? Or it's, it's 55A. That is the <laughs> shop itself. Um, That's 2010. Yeah, I was thinking if it's, if, it's, if it's A3, A3 is part of the new Class E, so you've still got your Class M A P D rights on it. If they change the use to restaurants, they would need to depart from that use. They haven't regularised it, so it kind of just might make it slightly more complicated. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. So I think you've got opportunities to convert it, just to think about that natural light, really, and, um, and access to the rear. It'd be interesting to see when you've got access to the rear. It'd be interesting to sort of check. Um, you can uh, walk. I mean, if you, you're physically there, you can walk around it. Uh, it does says access only, but no, you can't drive through because the landlord on this property in particular is very, very um, territorial. <laughs> this is my land. Don't, can't drive your car on it, but you can walk in it. So you have right away, I think, to, through the back. Um, I wish yeah, I, I, I'm almost leaning more towards it would just be a class G or something, you know, and just try and keep the value of the, the commercial use on the front. I think, like you say, you're going to have light issues, access. I mean, you could have maybe a staircase at the back and, and give you access or something, but uh, <clears throat> I'm just thinking with like parking. Let's get some light in. I think it's worth getting a scheme drawn up. Drawn up is my is my overall take. My well, overall... architect will will definitely give you a yeah. better steer on it. Yeah. Yeah. So up, my what... plan is really just get a, an architect's opinion from that list. Um, maybe get someone who's done something similar before, and then just ask them if they can come and visit and do a plan, and do make sure it's okay before we kind of go ahead and buy it. I think if, yeah, I mean, I, I think you've got you've got PD rights to convert it, depending on what you're paying for. Um, it may well be worth what you're buying it for anyway, in which case you've, you're pretty safe, I would think. Um, PD rights to convert doesn't, I mean, we still have to have lights, don't we, with PD? You still need to prove natural light, yes. Yeah, that's going to kind of affect density, it's going to affect, you know, you can really get some light into it. So you can, and sort of what, what everyone says is you kind of want to go in to get your change, you want to get your elevational changes in first, so then you get you can prove like if you get windows in the front or whatever. That's less contentious. If you want to go and put some windows in a, in a box, that's okay. You just go and put, you, know, you submit your application, you get your consent, and you kind of off you go. And then you go back in with your change of use under Class MA saying, these new windows I've now got, now prove I can get natural light to this flat, which I now want to put at the first floor of this building behind this brick wall, frankly, because I can now put a window in it. So you do elevation first, and then you do your change of use after it. Um, okay. Yeah. So elevation first, put windows in, and then go back and say, look, it's now got natural light. I can do PD on it. That, you know, that could be, like he says, you know, the first floor is easy. Oops, sorry. I'm just you're saying, saying what he's saying in terms of you keep the ground floor, because then the ground floor, certainly the front bit of it, seems to be worth as much as, um, as it's worth with a, with a change of use, frankly. So do you kind of keep that? I'm not entirely convinced, actually, because I think you still need to get natural light into the middle of the building and so mm. I sort of feel like you're almost better off converting it um possibly even setting it back actually or in fact you've got the front bit there so you've got you've got kind of a front garden to kind of keep this thing set back and then you've got sort of windows at the front with um doors and windows and stuff so that's all kind of fine it's just it's quite a deep building it is it's, it's huge honestly um you yeah. could do ballet in it <laughs> yeah yeah so it's just making sure you get the, the light into those the middle parts of it and kind of what you're using those for is the is the tricky thing with it. The wise advantage I think saying, well let's use a bit of the front for resi, sorry for um for uh retail. Um but I think you've got access to the back, you probably need some sort of access way to the back bits anyway. You've got windows at the back, but it's um window access across it. So So when they see the surgery bit and on the map, it says surgery. You yep. can actually um 
so the the blue area you can walk in and then go through the surgery the surgery area is actually just pavement it's not a surgery you can just okay. walk in there and then it goes to at the entrance to this um bit here, yeah exactly bit here you can just there's a there's access basically for walking um just no no car access Well, I think you've got sight issues in effect. But when you look at kind of the, the way the site lays out. Mm. So I think you can see Stanley Court, the road that comes in, um, and then on the, that bend there, you can just walk in, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So don't go up the road, but like on the side before you go up the road. Lights at the back, isn't it? And this is kind of what you're saying. It's kind of how you get the lights at the back. Unless it's just seems to at the back and then. Sorry, um, you, you, I think your voice is going a little bit. <laughs> or Sorry, the... yeah, no, I was just saying, uh, it's kind of how you get the light in the back. It looks like you've only got part of the upper parts, um, part of the first floor, rather more of it, but so you've got 4,400 square feet and then you've got sort of under 2,000 square feet of that. It's, at first floor, you've got kind of 700 square feet or something. So my guess is you've got kind of part of the first floor, hopefully at the front, and then you can get natural lighting behind it. Um, any plans for it? Because those are kind of important, interesting. So if there's a set of plans of the planning application, um, uh, there you go. Existing first floor, existing ground floor plans. There's your ground floor plan. Does it matter that it was very old? It was ten years ago. No, I think like the building won't have changed unless there's a planning application to change it. Will it? So. Um, so there's your existing first floor there. So it is at the front, so there's kind of a, a void at the back, I think. So it's across that line there, doesn't it? Mm. Interesting. So that two front doors at the front, that's just entrance from the front, isn't it? Yeah, that's the two, then, two units either side. And then in the back, you can walk in, go up, I suppose. Yes, you can walk up, and then it's a flat upstairs. But I'd, um, and then that. I wonder actually if the scheme is that line is the same there. So this is done by A. Burns or A. Barnes, sorry. Um, do you think perhaps I should go back to them and ask if they. Yeah, Peter Zan and Bills, yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs> That's a good name, A. B. C. Design and Build. Yeah, I mean, whether they're the right people or not. Um, it's not a particularly glamorous planning application that changing use from um, from from retail to, to restaurant. I think um, you find a better better architect off that um, off right, this okay. and get better people off the back of that. Sort of the more sort of um, what local, about our purpose. Yeah, who were the local developers using? Um, I think with some sort of change of use. The, um, The second one down. That might also, yeah, that might be interesting. Might be. Second one will be interesting, yeah. Um, so I think I have a good dig through that lot and see what <laughs> okay. looks most similar. I did get a couple of people and um, see what. Um, there's a change of offices to buy some contained flats there. Um, yeah, that seems exactly like what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah, go and look at them and see what. Stokes ah, Stokes Morgan. Yeah, they're Bristol based. Out maybe and have a look at the planning after sort of thing for them basically. So, um, and go from there if that's, if that's okay. Yeah, brilliant. No, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, better look with it. Good Sorry? luck with it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Emily, is that, is that on market or off market? Are you off market with that one or are you on market with it? Um, it's on market, but now if I know both of you are going for it, I will back off. But you know, <laughs> no, no, I will not compete. It's just um, I, I'm fairly new to bigger uh, development, so I've just com I've converted a shop, a small one, to shop and flat above. But I thought this kind of works, so I want to do a bigger one. And I know this whole new PD rights has um, with Class G. It's rather good with one shop at the bottom with two flats. Just you know, you outright can do it. And I, and this this is um, my hometown, so I thought, well, I could do that since it's my ex charity shop. So. Why don't I do it? But uh, it's, it's more just finding the right people, like you said, and the um, architect having the know-how and the, who to go to and whether or not it, it's worth doing and can well, be Well, ideally, you find somebody off here that's got some sort of 
Similar. Key rights class, something or other, change of use from some commercial use to residential, something like that would become quite useful. I'm just um, surprised that p these people have done uh, so that uh, Stokes Morgan, for example, and Western Building, they're all based in Bristol and they <laughs> came up here in even in this local district. Or I think you've done Bath and North East Somerset local authority. Have, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just interesting that people in, I guess, architects in Bristol could also do planning for this district or this um, local authority. Um, they probably don't mind going anywhere, do they? What you what you'll tend to find with with architects is they'll you know typically it's that sort of fifty mile hundred mile radius from where they are. So they're based in Bristol. They'll do Gloucester. They'll do Baines. They'll do Somerset. Um, you know, possibly even Cardiff. Although that's you know quite a big change with sort of you know whole mm. um, the Welsh planning system and all of that kind of stuff. But you'll probably find they'll do three or four local authorities. Mm. And like I find you know the planning consultants we use. In Oxfordshire, you know, you've got Oxford City and then four different local authorities around it. Um, and pretty much any planning authority or architect will will know each of those four local authorities. Beyond that, maybe then bigger people who can deal with even more authorities again. But certainly, a, an, you know, an Oxford architect or an Oxford um, planning consultant would mm. know those, each of those five local authorities relatively well. And so that's why, yeah, someone at Bristol will we'll definitely know Baines just because it's, you know, it's right on the edge that's of Bristol. Fine. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I'll engage with some of them. I, I suppose it's just, I guess, paying them to do the scheme, isn't it? And then they can, yeah, it will be a whole whole plan. Well, I think yeah. you can work out whether you pay them or not, really. Say, well, here's some schemes I've put forward. If you're successful on this, then... Um, you know, maybe you cover an element of cost at the start, but if we do, um, you know, if I'm successful in buying this site, as I expect I will be, then I'll give you the instructions to go to the work. They might just do a quick, a quick scheme off the back of that, um, just to be helpful. Okay, um, is it, that's so, common, is it? <laughs> yeah, I think if you can, if you can paint a picture of, um, you know, because there's there's four percent of bill costs, isn't there, in terms of that for them. In, in a fee going forward so the fee for them isn't in the 500 quid the thousand pounds they charge you now for a quick scheme the fee is in the four percent of you know rebuilding a four thousand square foot building the you know the four hundred thousand you're going to spend on that or six hundred thousand you're going to spend on it and the four percent of that 25 grand fee thanks so mm -hmm. they do a little bit of abortive work at the start just to try and win that fee off you um and so if you can kind of paint the picture that you kind of, you, there's, there's more that you're doing and I'm looking at other stuff and actually um, some of that stuff, I'll kind of also bring you on at the right time. If I find the right architect, I've got more that I need to go and do. Um, you'll often find they'll, they'll do a bit of work for you to, to kind of just to sort of get the relationship going. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll prep myself basically. I'll write up a, almost a script, a bullet point script. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need to be too um, contrived. We're just sort of saying that, um, this is what I do, this is what the kind of stuff that I'm looking at. I've got a particular scheme to do some help with. Um, it's going to be, you know, three, four, five thousand square feet of, of resi, I suspect, on it. That will naturally then make them think, well, I've got a fee of this much, which is kind of mm -hmm. enough for me to be interested. Um, and, you know, I could just do with a quick, quick sketch plan to make sure it all works. And I've checked, I think, I think class MA works, I've checked, I think class G works. Just want to get a couple of schemes drawn up to see what it might look like. Can you give us a hand? And, they would typically do that, I think. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try that. Thank you. Yeah, a good, a good quality architect won't take long to sketch up. I mean, you know, the, the, the two drawings that Paul brought up, um, you know, from a previous architect, that with a bit of tracing paper of sort of going, okay, yeah, there's your 650 square feet. There's, you know, there's a flat. Yeah. There. You know, it, and you, it, can almost, you can almost see it, can't you? You almost see that I want to knock this bit down at the back. I want to have that. That sort of line across the back regularized sort of looks a bit like that might be a load bearing. I don't know, but it looks like it might be. Um, mm. It's not a particularly heavy structure that's on the site anyway, so it's almost like you're taking that piece off and you're splitting it into four. And you know, I don't know if four is the right number, frankly, but sort of there's something, or well, perhaps it's into three or something. You know, does that would that work as three and a sort of change the front to make that kind of fit more naturally? Or if not the whole thing down and then rebuild it with a with a proper block on it with a bit of outside space and you know a little kind of out, outdoor courtyard or something like that with like some balconies on the back or something it's kind of the um, yeah 
No, balcony in the back sounds amazing, actually, especially with COVID. But I just had a question about the rebuild, because you're talking about knocking it down and rebuild. There was a cost in the Nimbus tab that says 100, feet, 100 pounds per square foot conversion cost. Is yeah, the conversion totally. cost the same as a build cost? or No, so the, re- the rebuild cost is more... Or, um... I, I can't remember where you looked at it. You clicked a few buttons <laughs> and yes. it appeared. It's on the, um, the class I'm here. Yeah. So oh, yeah, the strategy bits. Yeah. So, so the class MA strategy, what it's, what it's doing is it's giving you a, a baseline of saying, okay. yeah. from a planning point of view, it's comfortable to that building. From a, a viability point of view, the, the conversion of it should stack up. And yeah. it's not then saying that that's the risk you're going to commit. It's that there's a baseline for it. So actually, oh, sure. um, you know, so if you paid something like that for it, it's pretty comfortable that your build costs, you just converted the, the building as it is. I think in the cases you're not going to do that because you've got to worry about where you get your lighting and, and this sort of stuff. So there's a slightly more complicated scheme. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. In practical, this is a, a pretty much a theory, isn't it? Yeah, but then you might put another, another story on top of it because actually, so it's not oh. taking that into account. It's sort of saying that based off the existing footprint, it should stack up to convert. There should be a good return on it. Thanks very much. If you did knock it down and put four stories on it, because actually the building, sort of a couple of doors down, is much taller than this. Um, um, could you, you know, you just dragged that little man into that main street. Yeah. Could you take it to the back, like to the Stanley Court, so you could potentially have a look? Yeah, at- I think you can get down the back of it, actually. Yeah, try that. Yeah. Uh, okay. You can't get down the side. So but the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, this is a very tall building there. And then you're yeah. looking at kind of, this building here and of mm-hmm. course you've got these very sloping roofs so you've only really got one and a half stories here um it could certainly get to two and a half and of course that that class ma strategy hasn't taken that into account it's not saying that um we're going to put more space in it. it's saying well based off the existing building um if we convert that at 100 pound a foot it should stack up so it's then getting the nuts and bolts of the actual scheme but it's sort of saying there's a base a baseline where it should kind of stack up <clears throat> Mm, okay this sounds interesting it's, it's definitely one i'll keep digging on so um i've got my steps thank you very much both fabulous thank you Emily. thanks for, thanks for question uh, lovely right well i'm just conscious andrew of time um hopefully that has been useful for everybody um if anybody would like to um to look at Nimbus any, in any more detail. Typically, this is the kind of route people take through with us. So they usually start off um, with a sort of free trial with us. They'll often then take a demonstration, a one-to-one demonstration with the team here at Nimbus, kind of take you through the stuff that you're, you're looking to do. Often then we'll sign up to the Elite platform. That's the package that I've been um, using today. And indeed, sometimes upgrading to that Elite Plus system as well, which is the, um, the little buttons that I use, that class MA strategy that I applied, that little add-on that goes onto the Elite system that upgrades you into the Elite, set, elite Plus system. If anybody would like um, any details of that, I want to have a, a conversation with our team here um, at Nimbus, just to kind of look at how this system might help you. Um, I'm going to pop a little note into the chat. There's a bit.ly link there, which appears not to have come through as a link for some reason. So I'm going to see if I can get that to, um, I think I have to copy and paste that link. It doesn't seem to want to come through on the chat as a um, as an actual link for that bit.ly link, but it's just bit.ly forward slash Nimbus underscore maps. Um, that'll get you through into the team. You can, you can um, sort of set up your next, your next steps. You set your trials and this kind of stuff and arrange demos and this sort of stuff. And on top of that, I do actually have a, a poll that I can run. If anybody would like um, a follow-up, I can launch that poll. If you're struggling with that, that link in the, um, in the chat, then I've just launched a poll. So if you'd like to know more about Nimbus, then, um, click yes or no onto that on that um, on that poll for me, and we can get that get that action for you um, here. Fabulous. So, just that at the moment, Andrew. No more questions, I think, from anyone. Um, as I say, in the last few minutes, if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to post them. But other than that, it looks like we've. You know, hopefully everyone's some questions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All that remains for me really to say is um, thank you, Andrew, for your time today. Thank you for helping me with the uh, with the with the webinar today. <clears throat> thank you. And then just finally, thank you all for 
for watching today. It's been lots of fun. Thank you for bringing your questions forward. And it's been interesting. So I think both have quite a lot of opportunity, actually. So some exciting stuff. Um, good luck to, um, to you all with that. So um, I've been Paul Davis. We've been Nibbles Maps. We'll look forward to seeing you all again soon. All the best. Bye for now.